Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist Facebook Live segment, but not so live this week. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I gotta be out of the office tomorrow. So. Yeah, Phil is busy going around and visiting a lot of our dealers and customers for that matter. Yeah. Yep, getting them set up, getting them, getting them going for spring planning. There's a lot of guys, you know, here we sit, April 10th, 11th time frame, and guys are getting pretty anxious, so we gotta, got to get things going before it really gets planted. Mm -hmm. huh? Right, I was going to say, what would you say the average mood is so far? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an interesting question, but I think a lot of guys are, you know, they, they know it's Mother Nature. They can't do anything mm -hmm. about it. They're, they're frustrated, but... But then again, they know that, you know, they'll have the chance. So right. just being prepared for when the time comes because it's probably going to switch overnight. Pretty quick. Yeah. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. um, cover crops and specifically terminating cereal rye. Yep. Um, so we can just, scooch back a little bit and talk about... Yeah, I wanted, to throw in a, I wanted to throw in a bright side because it yeah. seems like this weekend we have some, some bad news coming up again. Some more snow and it just seems like we can't get out of this weather. I know. Um, I don't feel like there's really been a spring yet, but but there is a bright side. All right, um, I, I threw in the drought monitor here. Uh, a lot of guys don't look at this all too often, but but a lot of the a lot of the areas that were under drought uh, last season and stuff have pulled back. We've got ample moisture, soil moisture now, mm -hmm. um, so that is some good news. All right, um, you know I'm not saying that that doesn't mean we're we're not going to have a, a wet spring or something, you know, but the way things are going right now, we just need a spring. Mm -hmm. So right. to have good soil moisture is, is a good thing heading into the season. Okay, good deal. And this plays right into what we're going to talk about. You know, there's a lot of guys obviously getting anxious for planting and also talking about cover crops, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like, well, the cover crop's practically still dormant. You know, when should right. I be terminating it? I'm, I want to be planting corn, but I'm supposed to terminate it two mm -hmm. weeks before. Right. You know, so... We're sitting here, you know, still in the 30s across the majority of the state for soil temps, mm -hmm. um, which just makes it kind of a daunting task to think about all the things they have to do. So, right. Um, just want to, yeah, just want to talk through some of the termination methods, how they can do that successfully still this spring, yep. uh, and be prepared for planting corn and beans, you know, the, the primary crop. Mm -hmm. So. Right. All right. Sounds good. So maybe we can start with the do's. Yeah. Yep. So what you there's, keep in mind. There's there's several ways to terminate. Uh, you know, and primarily we're going to focus on cereal rye. Mm -hmm. You know, we have lots of different cover crops. We have a few different options, but uh, primarily the the one that most guys are planting is cereal rye. So mm -hmm. we're going to focus on that today. Um, and if anybody has questions, they can feel free to call us or ask. You know, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I would say the biggest ones are chemical control methods and and sometimes mechanical. You know, there there are guys that do uh, crimping, roller crimping or mm -hmm. crimping, um, and some guys that use tillage or even mowing. Um, but the, probably the majority of people are going to be using a chemical control method. So okay. a lot of these will focus on that. So the, the first thing I, I would say in terms of the do's are, are make sure you terminate early before corn. So I just said mm -hmm. that, and now we're sitting here and we should be terminating it. You know, right. right? So the, the scariest part about that is when to spray. You know, we mm -hmm. should have nighttime temperatures really above 45, 40, mm -hmm. um, and we don't have that anywhere close. You right. know, we're sitting here and it stretch a couple good days, uh, but that, that cover crop, that cereal rye even, is not actively growing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best things to go by, rule of thumb, is kind of, you know, your yard. You know, if you've been out and mowed it, you know, then, then that means the grass is growing well, and, and mm -hmm. cereal rye is a grass. Right. You know, so that, that kind of coincides in terms of active growing. You know, if you're going to be using something like glyphosate or Roundup, you know, what uh, glyphosate is the active ingredient, you want that plant to be actively growing because mm -hmm. it's it's translocated herbicide. So in order for that to go down to the roots and do its job, that plant has to be actively growing. <clears throat> yeah, need something so, there. Um, a couple other things there. I said this is one consideration a lot of guys are using cover crops for. So I still encourage you guys to do this. Plant soybeans green into a cereal rye cover crop for that weed control. Okay. And in this in this case, you may be planting the, the cereal rye may be a little smaller. It may mm -hmm. be a little better for those guys planting soybeans in the cereal rye. Maybe a little more advantageous, mm -hmm. um, but it also gives you more a little bit of moisture control. Right. Um, because that as that rye is actively growing, it's taking up moisture, especially as it gets bigger and more uh, starts to go into reproduction. Mm -hmm. um, gets to be a bigger plant. It's taking up a lot of moisture. So if you're having moisture issues, issues leave it out there, uh, mm -hmm. let it absorb that as it's raining, you'll probably get on your field sooner. Uh, right. And then you'll have that mulch there, and a lot of guys end up not having to do much in-season weed control, and that's really 
a big deal for soybeans nowadays since mm -hmm. it's so, we have so many weeds that are hard right. to control. So um, I threw that one in there, pay attention to crop insurance states, you know, mm -hmm. you, know you want to make sure you're, you're uh, abiding by the rules on that in terms of when to terminate and so forth for corn and beans. Um, so I, I just talked about spraying, um, you know, and when you're, when you're spraying, uh, trying to kill cereal rye with glyphosate or something, another key point is spraying during the heat of the day. It's kind of a little bit counterintuitive to what we'll probably talk about more later this, this, this year, this spring, mm -hmm. um, with weed control. But, you know, kind of during the, the hours that I was always taught to stay out of the sun as a kid, 10 to 2, you know, the heat of the right. day. Because that's when the most heat's out there, that plant's actively grown and it's able to take it up throughout the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, scouting after termination. So going back out there, and I put that up there for a couple of reasons. Number one, for escapes. You mm -hmm. know, uh, it, it's not impossible to get a, a failure in weed control or cover crop termination. Um, so making sure that you got that and then following up with a her another herbicide, you know, with a residual or something later mm -hmm. to make sure that you get good kill. Um, but also uh, pest issues, which seem to be mm -hmm. one of the things we fight a little bit with cover crops. Having that green plant out there, it's like having the first cornfield in the area. You know, a lot of those moth flight patterns, you know, uh, whether it's army worm or cutworm, they're going to, they seek out those those areas of green and cover crops just as good as, you know, a green early cornfield too. So um, making sure you're paying attention to that. Okay, sounds good. And then um, let's flip on over to the don't side of this. Yeah, so I already kind of covered that one. Mm -hmm. um, but, but a couple other things to remember along the chemical control side. Uh, so terminating, uh, trying to terminate and fertilize at the same time is not necessarily a good idea. There's some things you shouldn't do in combination, especially with glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate uh, has really good control on the grasses. Um, use it at a, at a full labeled rate, obviously. Um, but mixing it with things like UAN, liquid you know, nitrogen, um, is, is going to uh, be counterintuitive. It's going to have a negative impact as well as uh, mixing with some triazines or other contact herbicides, the, the burner herbicides. Um, those things, basically what they do, especially in the case of a UAN application with, you know, that, that spray, mm -hmm. your glyphosate, it's going to burn the plant. It's going to burn it before that plant has a chance to up, take it up and move it throughout the plant. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, don't, don't confuse those two. I'm not saying you still want to include, you know, your surfactants and AMS and things to get uh, good uptake by that rye, but it's you can also go the wrong way. You know, right. so remember if you're if you're trying to mix some UAN in or something, pay really close attention to that. This may be a a not so good of a year to try that um, mm -hmm. because things are going against you with, yeah. with temperatures and stuff. So if you have to fight one thing, the temperature battle, you know, maybe leave out trying to fertilize your corn or something, you know, and trying to make up for that. Do it in a different way. Put it down with. Uh, a pre-plant or something, you know, with the planter if you can, or or shortly after make up for it. But mm -hmm. putting it on with the spray solution uh, can make it a huge challenge and kind of be an ag antagonistic towards that glyphosate application. So that would be one thing I'd pay really close attention to. Okay. Um, I have that last thing on there. Obviously, I mentioned mechanical control. So so guys that maybe they'll get to it a, a, a later in the season, they're like, okay. Uh, this isn't going to work. I got to get this killed now. Um, really, if you're going to try to do mechanical control, it needs to be later. It mm -hmm. needs to be typically uh, after it's gone through flowering, which is the anthesis stage, which is when it's four or five feet tall. Right. Um, so if you're going to try that, you need to remember that. Typically, uh, so if you're doing some kind of tillage, you can do that a little earlier, but mm -hmm. you're probably going to have to do a couple passes to get complete control. Mowing, once again, you want to do that when it's taller, flowering as well as crimping because mm -hmm. those methods of control won't work earlier when it's not when it's still vegetative obviously right. when it's not tall enough to get a good kill so those things are, are really important if you're trying to do mechanical control methods that's something i would make sure to, to keep in mind on those okay so. sounds good well is there anything else you'd like to add on this topic today i would just say you know for guys especially with the, the weather that we're having the cool conditions you know make sure to use full labeled rates, especially on glyphosate. You will get good control, but maybe don't try to uh, go above and beyond in terms mm -hmm. of fertilizer or mix in other residuals or something that may be antagonistic towards it. And, and also don't be afraid on the soybean side, if you're planting soybeans into it, to, to let it go a little later. You know, mm -hmm. Use it to your advantage in terms of soybeans. 
you know, and a lot of guys do, you know, hay or use it for uh, livestock operations. You know, you can get three to four thousand pounds per acre out of, uh, you know, that 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 zero rye right. if you let it go long enough. So just use some of those things to your advantage on the corn side. Use full label grades and try to kill it as soon as it's actively growing. Would be my recommendations now. Okay, sounds good. And if anyone has any questions, they can call into the office and get a hold of Phil. Yep. Exactly. More than happy to answer questions. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you for joining us today, and thanks to our listeners for tuning in. Have a good day.